Hi fellow tutors, it's uh, Lyndall Parker Newland here and I'm Medical Director. I wanted to have a talk to you about the new RCE exam, the RACGP uh, OSCE development, and just have a think about what the changes are from our traditional OSCE that we're used to and how we can best prepare our students for this new exam while the college is in transition to a new clinical competency for 2021. So basically I just wanna go through some of the resources that the college has released what the format of the new exam will be and how utilising our existing resources we can best support the students. So I think first we need to think about what the primary differences are between the two exams. Now the college had made it clear that initially they were going to just cancel exams for the first half of 2020 but as it became obvious that this pandemic was going to be a marathon not a sprint and that it could be quite some time before we can go back to large groups of doctors and patients face to face they felt that it was necessary to bring in some kind of transitional exam format uh, they've been moving towards a different remote delivered clinical competency for some time and we don't really know yet what that's going to look like but i anticipate that this rce is probably a hybrid between the existing OSCE we're used to and where we're going to get to eventually. That's sort of how the vibe is sounding from the college. <clears throat> so what we're used to in the OSCE is generally two examiners per station, face-to-face -face consultations, mostly with simulated role-playing history taking. A few other case styles, but that's the majority of it. That it's usually one big marathon session of a few hours. There was a combination of short and long cases there was a standard three minute reading time for everything and it was all mapped to the core skills in the curriculum. So I think it's important to think about looking at those things, what's changed with the RCE. So firstly, it's gone from two examiners back to one examiner per station. Um, and there may be some simulated case consultations, the role playing that we're used to, but that's no longer the majority of the exam. I'll talk in a moment a little bit about the case types we'll be doing. It is much more in the way of case-based discussion with examiners, which I think is actually a higher level thinking. Rather than just showing what they can do, there's a lot more discussion about why they're doing what they're doing. Um, all students are obviously remote delivery, so this can be done anywhere, and that decreases a lot of load on the students as far as travel or expense. It's delivered over three to four short sessions. <coughs> Excuse me, and I'll have the dates on, on a slide coming up. But what it means is that rather than doing sort of four hour slog through the OSCE, a very high stress day, this is over a period of uh, four or five days doing three separate sessions, and potentially four if they are borderline, and I'll explain that in a moment. The, all the cases are of equal length, they're all 10 minute cases, so uh, no shorts and longs. There's actually more reading time per case, up to five minutes per case in reading time, more time to think. And rather than using the core skills, they're moving towards a clinical competency model. So I'll explain that as we go on. But these are the fundamental differences we're going to see. So when it comes to clinical competency, the college has identified 10 clinical competencies, and this is part of the RACGP core curriculum. It's all available in GP Learning and on their website. But particularly the competencies they're looking at in the exam and the stations are mapped to are uh, the following. So communication and consultation skills, clinical information gathering and interpretation, making the diagnosis, decision making and reasoning, clinical management and therapeutic reasoning, preventive and population health, professionalism, GP systems and regulatory requirements, procedural skills, managing uncertainty and identifying and managing the seriously ill patient. So that's quite broad. That's basically everything we do. I think having those key clinical competencies mapped out like that actually makes our job easier because we can see where the priorities lie. Now, in the associated support materials for the college and for the college webinars, some of these competencies are actually fleshed out in finer detail and it's worth having a look at that if you've got the time. But in summary, I think we can probably see pretty clearly where this exam is going. 